I wanted to be a geologist when I was about, ooh, from about the age of 10. I was born at uh, the southern end of Loch Lomond and I lived there at the time. And I can take you to um, the southeastern corner of Loch Lomond and you can stand on the Highland Boundary Fault. It goes through Loch Lomond and on the southern side the loch is shallow with lots of islands. In the northern side it's narrow and it's deep and you can see the fault going all the way and that fascinated me. So I always wanted to be a geologist. I guess I met Roy in 1987. He was in the finance department of BP and I was an advisor to BP on the taker of Rupert Oil. In 19, late 86, 87, BP sent me off to business school uh, and came, he was a mere geologist. They sent me off to business school for three months and I came back into a, a new M&A group in BP Finance. Um, in fairly short order, in the next three, four years, we bought Brit Oil, we sold BP Minerals to RTZ, we did a whole raft of upstream disposals internationally in the Netherlands, in France, in New Zealand, in Gabon. We had whale of a time, uh, but it was the making of my career. I then got to know when he was the uh, head of M&A at BP in 89. We worked on sort of like selling France and selling in Netherlands, the upstream businesses, and then a bit of Magnus. And then I knew him through Clyde, he went through to Clyde. Um, and I did one or two deals with him then. And also uh, worked with him on the defense of Clyde against Gulf uh, Canada. Uh, which was J.P. Bryant. And we actually, uh, Roy lost by a smidgen at the Norwich Union, sold out just at the last minute. But you know what, with hindsight, that was probably the best thing that happened to him because he then went on to a, back himself into a company called Pittencreef and that then became Paladin. But the point about that was, and this was where Roy was really very, very clever, he started up a company and started buying assets when the oil price was around $20 a barrel. And this was late 90s, built out 2000. And I actually, I think I sold him the first of his big deals, which was uh, Patrick Allen in Norway. But he then sort of built that company up through to, what it was, 2007 or something like that. And then he sold it around $60 a barrel and he made his shareholders a serious amount of money. He did very, very well. But having given me that confidence, I guess the next milestone was leaving BP in 1991, um, joined Clyde Petroleum and after three or four years, um, I ended up defending a very hostile bid for the company from Gulf Canada. Uh, very emotional at the time. But probably the best thing that ever happened to me was on day 60, they got a tad over 50% of the company. Our reputations were made, and that's what allowed us to do Paladin. So I first met Roy in London around a decade ago, and for everyone's reference, until recently, he was a long-standing member of Kerrigan's advisory board. But it's fair to say his reputation preceded him. And actually, when I think back about it, it personally, one of the reasons I joined Kerrigan was his involvement in the firm. And you know, during our first interaction, he was incredibly engaging, very knowledgeable, but equally personable and very approachable. And that has remained constant since. Um, it's very easy to talk to him about everything, whether it's the energy industry, his views on leadership, or the more fun things in life, such as African safaris, sports, or his dogs. I first met Roy in early 2017 when he was on the Amec Foster Wheeler board. He joined the Wood Group board later that year following their class one acquisition of Amec Foster Wheeler. And, and in my view, he was a, a key influencer at board level in driving the successful integration of both those companies. Well, I genuinely can't think of a more worthy candidate or one that's actually more overdue. Uh, I mean, his career uh, speaks for itself. The, uh, the nearly 20 years with BP, the CEO of Clyde Petroleum that we were referring to earlier, um, 
And then the, when, after Gulf Canada took over Clyde, he became CEO of Paladin Resources, which in itself was a remarkable success story. And he took uh, Paladin from a very small market cap to a sale to Talisman in 2005, I think it was, for around two and a half billion dollars. But you know, 10 years on the board of Santos, seven years initially, uh, I think, with Statoil, and then was invited back barely 18 months later uh, to serve as, as deputy chairman and as the first non-Norwegian to hold that post. Um, but you know, then chairman of the uh, premier, chairman of the Wood Group, <laughs> the, the list goes on and on. Uh, director more recently, perhaps, with, uh, with Cosmos and Energian. Oh, and not least, uh, chairman of three uh, Kerogen portfolio companies along the way. He's very highly respected in the industry. He's been around for a while. He's got a lot of experience. He's got a really strong technical background, as well as commercial business. And I think his governance experience with all the boards that he's been on recently as well, and the contributions to the industry and now focusing on ESG energy transition and sort of that next chapter, um, I can understand bringing all those skills together, commercial, technical, judgment and strategy. Absolutely, it's a good time to recognize what's happening in Roy's contribution. He's clearly over this long career had huge success in helping to navigate the energy industry through complex challenges and relentless change that we've all seen and he certainly played a significant part, in my view, in the positive impact on millions of lives that our industry can justly be proud of. To this day, he has the same passion and commitment to the continued evolution of our industry as we work to solve the climate change challenges of today. And I really do think he is one of the few people in the industry who's done it all. And he's got a huge variety of experiences that stand him out from the crowd. So he obviously started his career at BP, but then became an entrepreneurial CEO of two independent companies, Clyde and Paladin. And more recently, he's been an advisor to some amazing companies, including his chairmanships of Premier and Woods and advisory positions for Equinor, Santos, OMV, Cosmos, Energy, and, and of course, Kerogen. And I think it's this willingness to embrace uh, these different situations uh, has meant that he's really impacted a lot of companies, their stakeholders, and most importantly, their people. And that's already been recognized through his OBE. And you know, for me, at least, it's no surprise that he is the recipient of this Lifetime Achievement Award. Arguably, this award means more in that it's pure recognition of what I've achieved. Um, I think the OBE, on occasion I would confess over the last 10 years to, well I send it back as it's become more and more politicised and has become more and more populist. Um, it meant a lot at the time. It would have meant more uh, had my mother been there. So he, he is a thoughtful guy. He does think things through, which is a really important thing. You know, life is a game of chess as I keep saying to lots of people, and it's not their next move that counts, it's the ones after that. And he is very much into that sort of mode. Roy's kept his feet firmly on the ground. He's got razor sharp memory of the learnings from the past, and, and he uses this to mentor emerging leaders, uh, support existing experienced leaders, and he's also always willing to mentor more junior members of the wider executive team, regularly meeting them for coffee or lunch, to understand more about their business. He, he's well known for his generosity in sharing his wisdom and experience, uh, so we, we don't hesitate to call on him. Roy's got an ability to quickly cut through any unnecessary bureaucracy to get to the core of an issue and resolve it quickly with minimum fuss. He's refreshingly pragmatic and humble and has never forgotten what it's like to be working as part of a team, no matter the stage of career. This makes him a very human leader in my view. I mean, I, I guess the trendy word is authentic, but I prefer human, which is very powerful actually when you combine it with nearly five decades of robust experience.
Roy, many congratulations on this award. I genuinely can't think of a more worthy candidate or one that's more overdue. Congratulations. Well, congratulations, Roy. It's incredibly well-deserved and I'm sure everyone in the room thinks the same. And I'd also just like to say thank you for you know, helping me throughout my career. And uh, I look forward to celebrating with you in person uh, when I'm next over in London. Obviously, I'm very, very pleased. Um, delighted with the award, but uh, yeah, there's a certain humility. There are many, many others out there who are equally deserving, but thank you.